Vyhrocený střed dvou světů, sportovců, celebrit a velkých osobností. Nejpopulárnější český zápasník Carlos Terminator Vémola poprvé a možná naposledy v boxu a tedy mimo svou komfortní zónu. A proti němu rapper Marpo. Jak si Vémola povede v disciplíně, o které mnozí říkají, že není jeho nejsilnější? A hlavně, v jaké se vrátí formě po více než roční pauze? Měli se utkat v MMA pod otevřeným nebem na Pražské štvanici. Jejich cesty se však rozešly, ale teď se znovu spojí. Miláček publika Miloš Melon Petrášek si to v boxu rozdá se svým slovenským rivalem a bývalým šampionem Samuelem Pirátem Krištofičem. Dokonce i šampion bantamové váhy Jonas Magard dostal chuť okusit box mezi osmi provazy. Takzvaný dánský žralok sáhl po opravdu velkém soustu. Tím není nikdo jiný, než tituly ověnčený supertalentovaný bad boy Vašek Sivák. Nenáviděný nebo milovaný bohumínský rebel Baba Jaga Mikulášek si v pěstních přestřelkách libuje. A teď má šanci si to užít naplno. Po čtyřech letech nucené pauzy se do akce vrací držitel 3 o v prvním kole. Michal Kotalík, kterému se tím splní sen, v který už ani nedoufá. Možná nejlepší boxer v oktagonu a bývalý titulový vyzivatel Apollo Silva si to v boxu rozdá s neporaženým slovenským vojákem z povolání Markem Mazuchem. Michal Krčmář a Vlado Lengál. Trávili spolu čas v jedné vile v rámci Octagon výzvy. Sdíleli společný pokoj, byli parťáci, ale těmto dnům odzvonilo. Teď si oba řekli o vzájemný zápas a ten taky dostali. My se tak můžeme těšit na skvělý souboj dvou dekorovaných postojářů a šampionů svých disciplín. Společenská událost roku z pražské O2 arény. Octagon Vémola vs. Marpo. Už 21.5. v pražské O2 aréně. Lístky v sítích Ticket Portál a Ticket Master. Finalista Octagon výzvy Jakub Hezou dohnal se po několika letech vrací do Octagonu. Jeho bilance příliš mnoho nezrostla. Devět vítězství a dvě porážky. Na tuto bilanci bude chtít navázat i s Jamikem Furtádem. A mě origen o... A mě bázi de mi mě je Muay Thai. I pronto. Eu espero. Ele vai trazer uma luta pragmática, mas eu estou preparado para qualquer tipo de situação e qualquer tipo de contratempo. Ten má ve svých 35 letech na svém kontě 11 zápasů, 7 dokázal vyhrát a 3 soupeře dokázal ukončit KO. O soupeři jsme viděli akorát jedno video, co nemá rád je tlak. A já tlak miluju. Chci, že to bude chtít odstřelovat z dálky, bude se hejbat, bude takový, bude střídat gardy. Odohnala můžeme očekávat kvalitní zem a možná i pátou submisi jeho kariéry. So next up we move to the lightweight division and we welcome the African Lion, Imak Furtado to the octagon cage. This man is 35 years young with a record of seven and four. And Luke, we we heard on the intro there from uh, from Donald that he felt that the only video that he'd seen on this guy fighting that he does, he crumbles under pressure. Now I would argue almost the other way. His last fight was a victory. He was brought basically across the ocean to Scandinavia to fight a hometown favorite, an up and comer, somebody who had the, all the crowd behind them, everything to lose. Uh, and he rose to that occasion, not just beating him, but beating him in, un in emphatic fashion and getting the unanimous decision. If you underestimate, and even you said on the, 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 uh, the VTs before this, that this guy's a beast, right? If you underestimate him, do it at your own peril because he's dangerous, he's experienced, he's got, uh, He's well traveled and he's got nothing to lose. Well, they uh, they said it. We are just watching one video. Well, you're never just watching one video when you're going to fight a man like Portado. You, yeah. need to, you need to be going through his, uh, his previous fights, looking what he can bring to the table because there's a lot that he can bring. Really, really dangerous on the feet. And 
I think he deals with pressure well as well. Maybe Donnell thinks that he's got too much pressure for him, and that kind of plays into his game because he likes to bring the pressure. But I think it's going to be difficult to do that. Mortale likes to move. He's hard to track down. He's hard to corner. Um, it's, it's, uh, for me, this is one of the fights that I'm really, really, really looking forward to. I know it's like the second fight of the night, but I think they've uh, loaded this card and have early prelims. This is going to be an exciting one. Yeah, without a doubt, stylistically, it fascinates me as well. And when I look back and I've watched the, the, the fights on him as well, the ones that I've seen a few of them, quite a lot of them, in fact, have been on smaller regional shows. Smaller regional shows with smaller cages where he can't find that space. And where as a grappler, you're easy to cut off the cage corner and get pinned up against the cage. So it, they might be under the illusion that he struggles with pressure, but I think he is the king of range. If you let him fight at range, that is where he's particularly dangerous. And we are in front, sat here in the, the best seats in the house, in front of a huge cage with plenty of space, plenty of open water. And I think for Donald to think that he's going to be able to to easily pressure and break him. I think that's almost a fool's errand because that could play nicely into his counter-striking game. Yeah, and he has an, a deceptive reach as well, very, very long arms too. So it's very, very effective at range. And I think he told the story on the walkout. You saw him dancing as he was coming out. That to me signals big work footwork. It's all about moving your feet, light feet, light feet, light feet. And it builds into the mentality as he was walking to the cage, you could see it. And here he comes, Jakub Donal, Hezun, Hezun, and this is uh, speaks to the music that he walks out to. He got nicknamed Handsome very early on in his career, and he went, Do you know what? If they're calling me Handsome, I'll take it, I'll keep it. Uh, so that is. Uh, I mean, I'm a confident man, Ryan, as you know. <laughs> but to come out to this song is next level. I would have loved to see you. Come. Listen, I'm a big Beatles fan. I was always one of the, the, the biggest fans of your walkout tune. But my goodness, if you walked out to I'm Too Sexy, I'd be on my feet clapping the whole <laughs> way, Luke Barnett. So look, let's talk about this man's skills. He, he's well known to the Octagon fans, hasn't been in the Octagon cage for a, a little while, but he was on Octagon Challenge, was the runner-up in the season that he, he was on. Started boxing age 15, but it's grappling that really has uh, been his bread and butter, especially in mixed martial arts. European grappling champion. Uh, he's also European kickboxing champion, Czech Republic and Slovakian grappling champion, Polish champion of grappling, 10-time champion of Sandu in the Czech Republic as well. So this is somebody who mixes it up but when you see him in the cage it's all about using strikes to close distance to get the clinch to get the takedown to work from that top position yeah, he's done a bit he's done a he's little done bit. A bit he's done a bit this no. tune has been heard many times that's <laughs> right said Fred <laughs> owe him a lot for royalties that's all I'll say yeah no he's been around the block he's been around the circuit competed in every every martial art you could name I mean you went through the list but I'm not sure he's fought so many men like Portado it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. Like you said, definitely game plan wise, close the distance behind the hand to get this to the mat. Let's see how he plans on doing that. They'll touch the gloves as they go past each other. And just as they did, the size Vitado has put on from yesterday at the weigh-ins is incredible. Tell the tape there, five years the younger, Yakub, height and reach. Apparently on his side, that's, I'd argue against that with the tape measure. Maybe it's the hairstyle of uh, Imak Furtado. But we are set and ready for our second fight of the night. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Máme před sebou druhý zápas dnešního večera. Vaším rozhodčím v oktagonu je Tomáš Kohout. Pojďme si představit oba muže. Nejprve Modrý roh. 35 let, 173 cm, 70,7 kg na váze, hybrid training MMA team, po trenéry Pazilio Leálem, Sorry Jalou a Andreasem Batistou. Má na svém kontě 11 zápasů, 7 vítězství z toho 3 KO a 4 porážky. V rámci Neruda Cupu za škola obchodování.cz Jamik Leo Africano Furtado! Červený roh, 30 let, 177 cm, 70 kg na váze, Fight Club Brno a Sway Brno. 
Po trenéry Lukášem Wolfem, Janem Sachem a Petrem Santlerem má na svém kontě 10 zápasů, 8 vítězství, z toho 5 ukončení před limitem a pouze 2 porážky v červeném rohu za Česko. Bývalý finalista Octagon výzvy Jakub Hezoun dohnal! Fight, uh, fight fair, rest in my instruction, okay? Protect yourself all time. Touch your gloves. Final instructions given out. We are set and ready for this lightweight contest. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds here at Octagon 32. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Luke Marnett. You look at the tip spot odds there. Dawn out in the red corner. He ready? is by far in front in the eyes of the betting public. Taking on Furtado in the blue corner there. Southpaw versus Orthodox, Luke. Come forward, heavy high kick, opening up. Nice from Jakob. Look, I'm going to argue about this octagon tape measure. Furtado is miles bigger than that. Jakob, right? Beautiful straight left hand. Yeah, he has a very long reach. Maybe a little bit of an error that you've, you've spotted there. But this is what he needs to do. If he can control this range and stay well with moving his feet, because we know Jakob, he's going to shoot. That's ah, what he's looking converts for. Converts it straight away. Very strong on top is Jakob, if he can get there. Beautiful work, chucks it off to get to the back. Straight away, has a great position here with the head. Furtado trying to work back up to his feet. Jakob using that little hook to try and separate him from the fence. Does well, needs to get that right knee a little bit further. Furtado doing the right things, but Jakob sticking to him like glue at this moment. Yeah, and that takedown was from so far right. It almost looked too far, but he converted it, and now he's graped, gr sorry, gripped and uh, moved his way up onto the back of Furtado. And Furtado gets back to his feet well. A lot of pressure, though. Maybe going to see the broomstick on the left side. This is what Jakob said he wanted to do, bring the pressure, and he's done it early. And the more time Furtado spends here, you know, in the grappling, it's going to slow down his hands. You can see he's very, very muscle-bound and he's pumping. Nice outside reap. You see the right arm all the way through, grabbing that wrist. wrist. Furtado has the arm drag position, but he needs to try and skew his hips. And he's doing it now, he needs to try and rotate. But it really is that right arm that's pinning him right now. Yeah, it's a, a ba small battles going on in this war. Yeah, he yeah. needs to try and fight the hands. He's done it now, manages to get his right hand out. Needs to bring his left elbow to his left hip and rotate because he's kind of getting pinned up against the wall. And he's been forced to work hard as well here. They look like they're just leaning on each other, but every single muscle will be battling for small incremental gaps and positions to try and gain the, uh, the advantage. This is all Jakob wants. He just wants to stick to him, just wants this. If he could do this for a round, two rounds, break him down, goes to the body lock, goes back to the back. Fortado searching for some sort of Kimura grip, but going to be very hard to get that. And even if he does, I'm not sure how effective it would be right in front of us here. Yeah, look how relaxed they just look straight at us there, Jakub. This is a position he works so often and he's so comfortable from. He's, he's great at separating Fortado from the fence and switching sides. He's, so now he's on the left yeah. hip, he's got one hook in. Then he maybe moved to the other hip, then moved back to the other hip. You know, he, he rotates fully, does well here. Goes now, see he's, he's covering the right hip. Looking now maybe oh. for a suplex, but Furtado covering the leg well. No, just couldn't quite elevate him. I held my breath there, as you could see, every muscle trying to get him up and in the air, elevated. But for, I mean, Furtado doing really well here with his balance. I don't know who's going to be more tired, who's going to be working harder. Obviously, Jakob more used to this pressure. This is what he wants to do, and I'm sure this is what he'll be training for. But he might be exerting a lot of energy here with his grip. Has the gable out, gives up the grip. Gets it back, though. And last time we saw uh, Donald in this octagon cage was Oct octagon 16 back in September 2020. That would be Christian Simon. That was a, a real technical grappling match between the two. Two young fighters really put on a show of excellent, superb MMA grappling. Manages to get free, does Furtado. Now he's the one with the forward oh, pressure. Oh, big strength there from Furtado. Tries to get a takedown of his own. Would really like to see him sit back now and create some space. 
He's got the frame on that left hand with the left hand. He can use that, yes, pushes off. Now we see him at distance. This is exactly where he wants to be. Has Yakov pinned up against the fence. Oh, Atif's to the midsection. Yakov comes forward with a little one-two. 45 seconds now left. Yeah, to be honest, one significant strike here could make the difference. Not been so much damage. Again, shoots from the outside, almost like in slow motion. Furtado oh. ends on top. Great conversion there. A nice reversal from Furtado. Over committed. Did Jakob Donnell. Yeah, it was superb there from Furtado because Jakob again shot from so far out. Then he tried to chain his takedowns together. Went for the outside trip. The hips, though, were Furtado. Brilliant. Ended up on top. And like you said, it could just be one moment, right? Even this last position, the last taste in the eyes of the judges as this round comes together might be enough to swing it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure Jakob's landing a punch. I haven't. I'm not no, sure. So Maybe there's a short one, too, but there was no commitment and they were purely to get the, uh, the engagement with the clinch. You know, the number one criteria for the judge's yep. eyes is damage. So, I had a lot of control in the grappling, but is that damage? No. Does it wear Portado out? Yes. Yeah. So, it's a tactical approach, and maybe it'll continue through the rounds as they shake out Dunnell here. Well, Looks like he exerted a lot of energy. I watched them enter the corner. They high-fived him. They gave him a little fist bump. They seem very confident that that is a... A game plan that is working for them, but you've got to be careful with scoring, right? You, I mean, it's that old cliche, don't leave it in the hands of the judges. But now let's look at the action. Go on, talk us through this takedown to start with. Yeah, from a long way out. I mean, that was not great work there from Fortado, but he managed to get back to his feet. And this was it, really. This, this was the whole round, controlling the back, seeing who could get on top. And Fortado won this battle. You know, he's the one who ended up on top of, uh, at the end of the round. So from all of the energy used and exerted. Oh, here's a, here's a, he landed one punch, I've seen, <laughs> maybe two. So I was probably wrong. Here's a great reversal. As he overreaches for that and just gets flipped with those hips. Great work from Furtado and scoring a fantastic takedown. Okay. I, I mean, if I was in the corner of Furtado, I'd be quite happy with that round. He brought exactly, you know exactly what he wants. He tried to do it and you defended it very, very well. Round two underway, Furtado, blue corner. Jakub Donal in the red, me, Brian Lacey, alongside Luke Manet. Switches stance, back and forth, southport. They had much better hips and reaction from Furtado, and kicks on the break as well. Seems to be confident here now, going into this second round. Big smile on the face. And looks fresh as well, Luke. The questions we had, is, what's it taken out of him, having to be defending those takedowns for the, uh, the first two minutes? He needs to be careful, though, because he doesn't want to get too overexcited and overcommit to shots, because that is what Jakob wants. Jakob wants him to overcommit so he can take him down. If we just see those good reactive hips like we just saw with that take down the fence, if he can do that for this entire round, oh, nice left hand lands, then that could be great for Furtado, because Jakob's shooting from very far out. He doesn't want to come too close. The shots are almost, uh, you know, a little bit obvious. Here, another one. Oh, and a good reaction once again. But no setup on that takedown, Luke. Before he's put the hands together, then gone under. This time, straight away looking for that single. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, Furtado can keep a distance. It, it seems like... Oh, nice check hook. Southport check hook. Um, it seems like Jakob's made himself obvious. And he is do doing, you know, really far away takedown attempts with no setup. And you can see them from a mile away if you stay relaxed and you keep your distance and you just pop, 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 and you have reactive take down the fence. Good sprawl and brawl mentality then. Uh... Switches stances nice now for Tado. That was lovely. But Much. again, maybe got a little greedy with that. That allowed the time for, for uh, Donald to get that clinch. And now looking for the take down, trying to hold for Tado down. For Tado does exactly the right thing. Pushing on the head now as well. Gets himself to the fence. This is beautiful work as he, he tries to peel himself out from underneath. Yeah. That pressure in that head. And what does that exactly do in this takedown position? What's that stifling? That's, he needs to build up the body. So that as soon as he gets the head high, that gives him strength. You go through the hole from the neck, the back, everything. If you can get a good, big, strong neck, big, strong back, it's going to make your takedown stronger as well. So if you can, you can kill the head, you can kill the takedown. Oh, now taking the back really nicely there, doing out. Controlling the wrist. Yeah, Furtado gets to his feet, but he's in a bad spot. He has two on one. Carrying away, Jakob is pinning him up against the fence in front of us. 
And you've got to respect this, especially from a grappler of uh, the pedigree of Jakob. Jakob crosses the feet and tries to get that reap on the inside. This is a lot of pressure now for Furtado on top. But he's trying to shake him off and pull him around, doing a good job. Could maybe reach for his head, but needs to be careful if he does that. He gives up the, uh, the arm, has two on one on that arm. As long as he has two hands on that wrist, he's not in danger of getting choked, like with a rear naked choke or a submission attempt. So that's keeping himself safe. Showing a lot of composure as well as the 35-year-old, not panicking in this position. And that's the most important thing, to keep his keep himself calm, keep this two-on-one. Really, there is not much Jakob can do. One minute, 35 seconds now. Trying to free the arm now is Jakob. Needs to be careful. Does Fortado, he's trying to point something else down to the referee. And in the corner of Jakob as well, you can see him taking instruction there. Um, as far as fatiguing Jakob from the other side of the coin, what's this doing? Because that body lock, I've seen sometimes when people have that lock for a long time, they can take the uh, uh, the, the blood out of the calf so that they, they, they affect their balance, their stance when they step up. Yeah, it depends how, uh, how much pressure he's admitting through his legs. I feel like he's definitely going to be getting tired, but Furtado's not even using the fence to help him. So he's carrying the weight of the whole yeah. man on his back. And that's, now it's around the body, that, that body triangle. It's, it's a bit higher now on the waist, so that's going to be on the bladder as well. That's going to be on his, you know, diaphragm, going to be really hard, making it hard for him to breathe. And he just can't seem to free and get rid of the body triangle. It's very difficult, but he's just focusing on the hand, doing what he needs to do as we go into the final 30 seconds. Yeah, he's, he's had this position for over a minute now, Donald. Yeah, again, though, you know, before this position happened, Fortale landed a beautiful left hand, right hand combination, caused damage. This is what we need to see. This is better now from Jakob. Needs to be punching, needs to be making something happen rather than just happy with the position. Holding a position doesn't mean you're winning the round. This is better. This is damage. This is urgency. This is what we want the, the you know, the judges want to see. Fans. And the fans. And the fans. <laughs> and us. And these final seconds now. Round two done. The... Uh, Check backpack off Furtado. You see Moses on back to his corner. Interesting round that though, Luke. Furtado looks strong to start with, coming out, stuffing those takedowns. Lovely takedown in the end from uh, Jakub, and then the back take, which was pretty much the, the rest of the round. Two, almost two minutes of that, that round was taken with uh, him strapped to the back of Furtado. And it was only the final 30 seconds maybe that he was trying to open something up with those strikes to look for a submission or to progress the position. But for me, this is what was the more important part around the earlier stages. You see those desperate shots, spins out well there. And lands, lands some solid shots, solid left hand. But this was a great takedown attempt, cuts the corner well. But good reaction from Fatalo and we managed to get into this position. As soon as he managed to get that two on one though, really stifled the attempt of Jakob and we, we spent quite a while here. And this was the, the spot at the end. You were happy to see him at least try and open up something with some strikes, do something a little differently. Third and final round of this lightweight contest is set and ready to go for Tardo. Look at the odds now from Tip Sport. Very close as we go into this third. Ooh, nice nice. That's straight to the midsection as well. Lands a big left hand as well. That seems to stun Jakob as he covers up. Looking desperate. Now he's really targeting the body. Again with that straight, those toes digging into the diaphragm of Jakub. It's come out very strong here as he goes high with that kick. Beautiful hips as well. What an opening to this round for Furtado again. Yeah, Furtado really does have. Piercing eyes, he's not taking his... Oh, another stab. With that team goes high with a question mark kick. Beautiful work. Bringing nice the pressure. Team. Oh, that hurt, Yaku. <laughs> that really hurt him. That, that body that's... language was completely different when he hit the mat there. Big shot lands, blood pouring from the nose. Needs to be careful here, Portado, though. Triangle attempt. Needs to not be overzealous. I, mean, I even it... just get back to my feet. Get I was going to say that. If you're in the corner, surely you're screaming, get back to your feet. But that big knee landed. It was hard to see on the camera angle and hard to see for us, but landed that jumping knee, then landed a great ground and pound shot as well. 
You can see the way that he turned over. A lot of pain now from Jakob Danhoa. And Furtado's come out in this third round like an absolute beast. This is what we expected, a little bit more of him. This he, is, yeah, the, the African lion is hungry and he's looking to feed right now. Extremely confident in the, the opener of this third round. And he's paying off here. And it was those shots to the mid midsection, Luke, and you used the right adjective, the purple one, stabbing shots, because that's exactly what it did. The ball of the foot digging into that liver, into that diaphragm again and again and again. I feel like we're one significant strike away from this being over. If Portado could just land one big shot, the body language and the work here from Jakob is, is showing he's in trouble. Both hands up, not looking to try and stand up, not looking to try and set, push him away, not looking to set anything up. He's in a lot of trouble here. He, he's certainly looking for the finish. Yeah, Portado trying to pour on the pressure. Halfway through this third and final round. Impressive third. And it needed to be as well, even if you take the, uh, the tip spot odds, as maybe an eye for how the judges saw it. I'm not saying that's how it works, because it doesn't. But... Somebody had to make a stamp, somebody had to make their mark on this fight, and Furtado is the one that is now leaps and bounds ahead. And we're not seeing much from Jakob on his back. I mean, he was in full recovery mode. But and now it's, it's hilarious because he said Furtado doesn't like pressure. That's right. Oh, that's this guy right. doesn't like pressure. I'm going to bring the pressure and I'm going to show him. And at the moment, it doesn't look like Jakob likes the pressure to me. Alex, uh, Furtado now on top. Constantly working, constantly landing shots. The referee's not going to be standing this up. If you want to get up, Jakob, you've got to do it yourself. Yeah, you've got to make and earn that space. But right now, that top pressure, even the head position from uh, Furtado. Yeah, it's pressure. It's a lot of pressure. But I feel, you know, he really needs to be looking for a finish here as we go into the last 90 seconds, minute and a half to go. I wouldn't be wanting to leave this into the judges' hands after the first and the second round. He's come out with that urgency. Needs to show some more of it here. Yeah, now, final one minute, 20 seconds of round number three. In what has been all one-way traffic for this third and final stanza from the African Lion himself. Animated corner for Jakob, as you can understand. Great awareness of the cage there from Furtado, and he just pulls him up. You see 90 punches to 32. Wow. Most of them, I think, have been in this third round. And the damage weight adding up now as well. First of all, those ones to the midsection. Now that face getting bloodied and bruised. He's covering up again, Jakob. Now he tries to stand up. Yeah, deep underhook here from Jakob, but pulling the arm very well. Furtado there. And just breaking down the posture. Again, doing the same thing. Jakob wants to be on that hand. He wants to use that to try and elevate himself and stand up. Goes into the guard. That is a negative posture there from Jakob. If you're in the guard, you're not standing up. Nice left hand from Furtado. And look at the pace and the pressure that Furtado is putting on. Sorry, the output. This is a the phenomenal pressure, stuff. Brian, the, the pressure. pressure. This will be that will be a, a phrase, a word that he will not use lightly again. I am sure because rising to the pressure is Furtado buckling under. It seems to be Jakob Donal. Final seconds of this fight. Dornell trying to grab a leg of heel. But that is it. Wow, what a third round from Furtado. Hands raised, marching round the cage. I mean, he's done himself proud. But, Without a doubt. But yeah. has he won this fight? I'm not so sure. You know, we had a similar situation at, at Octagon Prime at, uh, two weeks ago yep. in our main event. The third round or the final round in this case. All the side of Furtado, everything, the blue corner, everything, obviously won that third round. But it's a th three-round fight. Yeah, and it's a point-scoring system. That's it, it's not... So it's okay being happy with yourself and what you did. I mean, it was beautiful here when we see these stabbing teeps to the body. Left hands that landed well. I love how he teeped to the body. Then he question mark, kicked up to the head. Hopefully we get to see that. There oh. it is. What timing from the commentary box. What a chin on the Yakub as well. Took it well. And he just uh, really poured on the pressure here and laid a beating down in that third round. Be interesting to see what the judges have to say and be interesting to see how the fans react to it as well. Yeah, and this is how the round was seen out. 
Furtado on top. Once again, we will go to the judges' scorecards. We'll look at the stats though, my goodness, the numbers hugely, especially in the striking realms on the side there of Furtado. But those will mainly have come from that third and final round. As we said, it's a three round fight, so let's see how it was scored over those three rounds. Let's hand it to the man in blue, let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Dámy a pánové, pojďme se podívat na to, jak zápas viděli bodoví rozhodčí. Let's see how the judges scored the fight. First judge, Petr Balej, 28-28, 28-28, 28-28, Second judge, 29-28, 29-28, dohnal. Third judge, třetí rozhodčí, 29-28, 29-28, Dohnal, vítězem se stává Jakub Dohnal. I thought we were on the verge of seeing a draw there, but it goes in the way of Dohnal. Nice respect between the two. We should hear from Dohnal now. Yeah, the crowd reacting badly to that decision. But look at that, that's just a great show of sportsmanship. Kubo, jak moc si čekal tohle to vítězství, jak těžký to byl zápas a jak si zvěřil vlastně na to vítězství, když jste tady stáli u prostřed klece? Zápas, to byl strašně těžký. Byl extrémně silný a... Upřímně, my jsme se modlili, aspoň kdyby byla remíza, že to daj mě. Já myslím, že si pod... Jack? Jak se jmenuje? Gamik! I think he wants applause, because he's a great fighter. And yeah, he is really good at strong and strong. Okay. No. Okay. I, I know... Sorry. Ondro. Dejte tomu klukovi šanci tady v oktagonu, protože je dobrý, umí dělat skvělý zápasy a já myslím, že po dnešku si to hrozně zaslouží. Because he's great, great fighter and he can show great fight. Lamik, jo? Uh, obrigado, boa noite, boa noite a todos, boa noite a todos. Ok? Ok, uh, pode dizer. Boa noite a todos. Good night, everyone. He's gonna say a couple words. Isto é um show, pronto. Eu fiz meu trabalho, pronto. Ele veio uh, preparado para isso, para travar a luta. Mas não, eu vim para trocar com ele. Ok? Se for para o chão, levar para o chão também, como de ser. Ok? Guys, this is a show. Yamik and his opponent, they, they, they put up a fight for you guys. So, doesn't matter one. This is a show and they both, they give the best they are. He's a grapple, he's a striker, so it's normal. He wants to grapple. Já jenom přeložím, I will just translate. Uh, je to show a my jsme oba dva dali do toho všechno, uh, co jsme mohli. On je grappler, já jsem striker, jedno, kdo vyhrál, ale je jasné, že on chtěl grapplit. Já mi říká, že bych chtěl jenom další příležitost oktagonu a že si ji zaslouží. Já myslím, že váš potlesk a ten výkon určitě ano, furtáda ještě uvidíme.